Hi everybody, it's Greg. Today we're going to talk about a do-it-yourself project for the Green Eagle. Today we're going to talk about installing a dash on your Green Eagle. As you know, when you get a Green Eagle, you have a dash bar that goes across. Um, I didn't want to mount a dash directly to that bar because I didn't want to put any holes in it. And also, my reserve parachute actually fits in this space right here. So coming back to this dash, to save yourself some money, go to a sign shop and ask them for some junk aluminum scrap. This piece is 16 and a half wide going this way, 16 and a half wide by about 15 inches. And what I did was, is I traced out that front dash onto that piece of uh, steel, excuse me, aluminum. And so I got the curve and I cut it with a jigsaw. Then once I got that curve in there, I went over and took it to a shop and they put it in a brake and a brake, all that does is break it into an L shape. So that's kind of a critical point where you break it into the L because you want to make sure that your dash isn't too high. It just holds whatever instrument you're going to put on there, the lower the better so you can see over it better. But in any event, it's a real cheap way to get that dash made. Now to install my dash, what I did was I used twist ties, or excuse me, electrical zip ties. These are four foot long ties. They're about 50 cents a piece. There's two of them. Basically when you put it around your Green Eagle, they go completely around the cage and you'll see right there that the dash actually slides right in between those two zip ties. Once I get my zip ties in place, I put these secondary zip ties right here around each corner. What that does is it snugs these zip ties down, okay, it snugs them down and it keeps this edge from hitting my frame so this edge here doesn't hit my frame and scratch it. I do that on all four corners, one there, one there, one there, one there. The dash is now fairly snug if you look at it in there. When I set my parachute, reserve chute down here, there'll be a piece of Velcro right here that'll keep it really snugged up to that reserve chute. And then of course the reserve chute is secured to the frame. So now that you've seen what the dash looks like, it's very inexpensive. That piece cost me six bucks. The zip ties cost me a dollar. And that's pretty much all I got into it except for some white paint. Coming around to what I put on my dash is a choke cable was my first thing that I thought of. This choke cable is nine foot long. I bought it from Napa. It cost $14. In addition to this nine foot long choke cable, I bought nine foot of rubber hose, real thin. And the reason I bought this hose is one, because it's stiff so that it would keep this form going around my frame here so it's stiff. The other reason is I didn't want a metal um, choke cable banging around and scratching anything and I put a little bit of oil or not oil but grease inside there so it's snugged up really nice it just slides right over to one end snugs up right here and of course to put the cable in you put it from this direction without that hose on it you drill a hole slide the end of the cable through there and then snug it up with that bolt right there. There's another one on that side. Fairly simple insulation. You run it down around your frame. And once you get back here to the engine, I want to show you how I installed it because it's pretty interesting. If you look at where that choke cable is installed, at the very end is called a Z-bend. The wire is straight when you get it, but at the end it's a little Z. So just go to any lawnmower shop and they'll take a pair of pliers and bend it. It's a lot easier than bend it yourself. They won't even charge you for it. But if you notice right here, where is it? Right here, the cable comes all the way, the outer casing, to just about where that slot is. The reason for that is you don't want a lot of exposed wire right here because if you had the end of the cable way back here, or this outer uh, cable way back here, then the inner wire would be way exposed a lot and you would bend it. Also, with that tubing, if you can see, see if I can get in there a little bit better, I cut the front part of the tubing off. 
So you'll see that tubing extends a couple inches. The reason I did that is because that brass clamp right there now presses against the steel cable and then the tubing is in the back and it provides a spacer where that clamp is. Um, the clamp won't fit over the whole tubing, number one, but that back spacing that that creates, because I just cut that away with a razor blade on the front, keeps that cable straight and in line so it works really well. After that, you just route your cable down, comes from there, just goes straight down until you hit the frame. Another nice thing about this cable is it's pretty stiff. So all your wires that are coming now down the driver's side are all zip tied to that strong cable, which means if you see one right there where it's zip tied about every eight inches, what happened here? About every eight inches there's one, then you don't need as many going around the tube like that one. So they're zip tied together, so you don't need many of these on the outside. The other thing I put in here, which is really nice, ah, let's see here, is a cigarette lighter. Cigarette lighter is very simple to install. Basically drill a hole, you come around the back here, and this outer part just screws right into it, and you make one wire right here, one wire, this just clips right onto the hot. This part here provides the ground, so this is one wire, and that one wire, which is good for 20 amps, once again, is about nine foot long. It goes all the way back of the engine here to where the starter is. And it just connects right on there to the back of that starter, just like all the other wires. See where that yellow wire is right there? That yellow wire now goes down to an inline 20 amp fuse holder. You already have one fuse holder if you have the charging system, but this is the second one and that wire is only for the cigarette lighter. So what that does for me is that if I'm flying in the winter time, <clears throat> I can plug in a motorcycle suit or something like that, or if I have my instruments when I mount them up there <clears throat> and I want to um, power them up, I can put a USB cigarette adapter in there and then power all my instruments up if I want. Of course, the tiny tack is now easy to see. I can sit Within the cockpit, because I have the choke, I can start my engine up right from the cockpit on a cold day, or I can start it up normally and I can see how many RPMs and I can rev it up to 3,800 RPMs for a couple of minutes, make sure I'm getting all the RPMs I need. And it's very easy to see. Before, I had to go way down there and look for it. And that was a real pain. Of course, obviously, I put the ignition switch up here as well. Once again, Green Eagles, wiring harness is on the right hand side the passenger side and they coil it up and give you plenty of wires so basically i just uncoiled it all and brought it down here to put the ignition in it's the same as the choke the choke is a one inch hole the ignition i believe is a i want to say about a three quarter hole okay um, and it's the same thing on the very back as soon as i can find it where am i at it's hard to do this. On the very back, you have a nut, so you drill your hole, slip the ignition through, drill your nuts, and then you see the disconnect, quick connect for both the ignition and the, um, the tiny tack. If I want to take this dash off, the way that my reserve sits in here, I can literally pull my reserve off and then disconnect that yellow cigarette lighter, disconnect that tiny tack right there due to quick disconnect on the ignition right there and then basically unscrew that knob from my choke and I can lift the whole unit just slide it right out if I wanted to and take all my instruments and everything with me so if it's raining or something like that I can take my reserve parachute and the whole dash with me very simply without having to trailer the whole bird or something like that or if I'm out of flying I'm worried about somebody taking something <clears throat> so that's the dash and there is one more hole up there um, that hole was made so that I can put some tether lines through it to hold my two instruments that I'm going to mount a uh, couple notes just to sum it up nine foot clutch cable from Napa very cheap 
The dash itself is a piece of aluminum used sign board from a sign shop, solid aluminum. Um, basically the whole dash cost me plus the cigarette lighter, six bucks for the cigarette lighter, 14 bucks for the, the choke cable, about another 10 bucks for the hose. You can find some cheaper. Uh, the cigarette lighter is $7, so you know, 50 bucks, everything is done. And you can now start your motor and read your uh, tack very easily from inside the cockpit. You have auxiliary power. And another great thing with having the ignition right there, if you have a problem like your, I don't know, your throttle goes into the prop or something like that, you can stay buckled in and just reach in with your left hand and shut that ignition off as a dead man switch. So it gives you an alternate dead man switch, which is really nice. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You have a great day. Bye.